All right, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about uh, what are some of the methods uh, beyond your heart rate fog approximation, okay? So, uh, as usual, uh, keep in mind that a lot of the formalisms is not important for you to know or memorize them. So, none of the labs will require you to, for example, write out a heart rate fog equation or something. Uh, what you really need to keep in mind is really the concepts the concepts behind um, those methods, right? How do I go about um, incorporating electron correlation uh, into my calculations, okay? Now, of course, if you are interested in the actual formalisms, there are plenty of courses taught in the chemistry department or physics department that will actually go through all the formulas, formalisms in detail, okay? Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, uh, in our course, we are more concerned with the practical uh, outcome of the calculations, okay? All right, so um, we are going to talk about uh, how electron correlation is included, okay? Um, some of the methods will be far too expensive, okay? It is just useful to know that they exist, okay? Um, but uh, if you are interested in some... Uh, if you're interested in more than just a conceptual level, as I mentioned, you can actually uh, take some other courses that will cover those, right? So uh, let us start with the definition of electron correlation. As I mentioned, uh, typically uh, we define correlation as everything that is not in hard tree fault, right? So basically, whatever is your exact answer is supposed to be, you subtract out your hard tree fault energy that gives you your correlation energy, okay? So, what is one of the simplest way in which you can improve on the hartree fog approximation, right? So, the hartree fog approximation uses one single determinant, right? Your Slater determinant, okay? An obvious extension is to just, instead of just using that one Slater determinant, I'm going to um, use a linear combination of um, determinants okay so in other words i'm going to ins instead of just limiting myself to that one state determinant i'm going to create this uh, linear series of uh, determinants which incorporates interactions that are uh, electron electron interactions that are uh, from higher energy states or uh, from interactions between electrons okay so um there are two types of uh, correlations that we are concerned about. One is called dynamic correlation. Uh, this is basically the correlation from electron electron interactions. And typically, uh, for dynamic correlation, my C naught, which is my uh, default Hartree fog um, um, determinant, that the coefficient is much larger than all the other uh, coefficients. Okay. There is also what is called non-dynamic uh, correlation. This really arises, this is an error that arises from the single determinant nature of the hartree fogg approach. And um, this usually uh, is, uh, you can see this being manifested when you actually uh, find that uh, some of these coefficients are of a similar magnitude as your uh, C naught, okay? So, um, an example is this uh, trimethylmethylene uh, tri ethane uh, molecule or TMM molecule. Okay, so in this case, you have your frontier orbitals, and these frontier orbitals cannot be easily determined. Uh, determined uh, these degenerate frontier orbitals, which are all, in other words, they are, these orbitals are all uh, all have the same energy. They cannot be represented. Uh, simply using one single determinant, okay? And this is one case where you have non-dynamic correlation and you actually uh, need to, uh, you actually see that the coefficients will be um, uh, quite similar to each other, okay? So, um, the approach to um, deal with that is using what is called multi-configurational uh, self-consistent view or multi-configuration SEF. And what you would do is that you optimize orbitals for a combination of configurations or orbital occupations, okay? So, 
this means that, um, first of all, we define what is called the configuration of state functions. This, the configuration of state function simply just means is what is the set of molecular spin states and occupation number of orbitals that I am going to be concerned uh, that that is possible, right? And the active space is what are those orbitals that we are going to allow to be partially occupied, okay? So now, um, of obviously, this configuration of state function uh, is very, very large, okay? Even if you look at the scaling of the number of singlet uh, configuration, configuration of state functions for m electrons in n orbitals, you get this uh, combinatorial expression that you see here, okay? So what this means is that even taking into account just a uh, uh, few uh, uh, electrons in a few orbitals, you already have a very, very large number of configuration of state functions for your, uh, in the singlet state, okay? Now, um, a special case of uh, multi-configuration SEF is uh, called CAS, which simply stands for complete active space, okay? So in other words, I'm going to allow all my orbitals to be um, partially occupied, okay? Now, um, full configuration interaction, which is uh, the most expensive possible method that you can use, okay? Is basically the complete active space um, calculation for all orbitals and all electrons. So this is essentially the best possible calculation you can do given whatever basis set that you choose, okay? So um, when you have full configuration and interaction with an infinite basis set, you essentially get the co exact solution to the Schrodinger equation, okay? So um, this is obviously a, a super duper expensive calculation for most systems, okay? But for a very small system, you can actually use it to get your exact solution to your Schrodinger equation, and then you can actually use that to benchmark other methods, okay? So, for example, if you want to do this for a hydrogen molecule, that is perfectly doable, okay? You can actually uh, use NWCAM, you can uh, write, run a H2 molecule, you can actually do a full configuration and interaction calculation with a very, very large basis set, okay? and you essentially get the exact solution to your Schrodinger equation, right? <clears throat> All right, now, um, obviously, for most practical purposes, for most practical molecules, uh, this is not even in the realm of being doable, okay? So, um, the way that we do this is uh, to limit the cost of full configuration interactions. Uh, what we then have to do is basically to limit the number of excitations in the configuration interaction that we are going to consider for our, um, for, 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 to construct our, uh, our basis set, okay? So um, if you just consider the Hartree-Fock Hartree interactions, that's basically just give you a Hartree-Fock energy. Um, if you uh, consider the first excited states, uh, obviously the first excited states by definition, they don't actually have any interactions with your Hartree for ground state, but they do have interactions with each other. So this uh, this particular uh, this uh, this part of the matrix is actually fairly dense. But once you actually get to higher order interactions, uh, you will notice that the interaction terms then get sparser and sparser. Okay, so uh, once you get to the um, doubly excited states, those are those are actually uh, quite sparse. And if you go to the uh, triples, uh, those are even more sparse, okay? So, um, one of the, um, so typically we can start with uh, configuration interaction singles. Um, this is quite use, uh, useful if you are looking for excited states uh, properties. Um, it's not, not that useful for ground states, okay? Um, um, if you are actually looking for uh, more accurate energies, typically you do um, things like configuration and interaction doubles or even configuration and interaction uh, single doubles, okay? And uh, with CISD, you are already getting a very, very, uh, quite a good uh, calculation uh, for your uh, energies, okay? Now, but however, once you actually get to CISD, 
uh, essentially your scaling now has worsened, right? It originally, hard tree fork is n to the power of 4. Now you are up to n to the power of 6, okay? So in other words, the calculation is significantly more expensive than just your uh, normal hard tree fork calculation, okay? Now, um, another way of um, adding correlation to your hard tree fork calculation is to use uh, perturbation theory, right? So um, the molecular Placid uh, perturbation theory approach essentially treats your Hamiltonian as a perturbation on your one electron fault operators. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to assume that my exact Hamiltonian is equal to my uh, fault uh, one electron uh, Hamiltonian plus some uh, perturbative uh, potential. Okay, on top of that uh, one electron fault operators. Okay. And um, we can then uh, expand our ground state eigenfunctions and values as a Taylor series in this uh, parameter lambda. And um, you basically, after you go through the math, uh, as by equating the powers of lambda with uh, in imposing some normalization, essentially what we can do is that we can obtain um, the first order, second order, third order, fourth order uh, corrections to your uh, Hamiltonian uh, uh, wave function and Hamiltonian energy. Uh, sorry, your um, Hartree fault uh, wave function and your Hartree fault energies. Okay. All right. Now um, MP one uh, is simply basically a Hartree fault. Okay. Now uh, when you have MP two, uh, that's basically you are including the second order energy correction from your perturbation theory into your uh, Hartree fault terms. Um, for MP2 calculations, you still have analytical gradients available. However, um, your scaling now is up to n to the power 5. And uh, for MPN greater than 2, uh, you don't actually have analytical gradients. Uh, but uh, at about n to the power, uh, at MP4 or so, you already have about 95% of your electron correlation uh, inside, uh, being incorporated. Okay? So, uh, MP, the MPN uh, type of calculations are very, very common in quantum chemistry. Okay, so if you go look at your uh, a lot of, of the works in the literature, uh, you'll see MP2 calculations. In some rare cases, you'll see MP4 calculations. Okay, and uh, those are actually uh, re reasonably accurate. Okay, now um, <clears throat> there are some issues with this um, perturbation theory approach. Right, so typically when people uh, when we apply perturbation theory to a problem, we usually assume that the perturbation itself is small compared to the um, to the original potential. Right, it is. Uh, we we have usually when we have we make some assumption on the size of the perturbation. Now, obviously, in the MPN approach, the perturbation is typically not small. Right, we are talking about the full electron correlation that is being uh, perturbed, uh, that is actually your perturbation term, term okay? So um, in practice, this actually usually doesn't seem to be that much of a problem. Uh, so the MPN approach actually works uh, reasonably well, okay? Um, the other problem is MPN is also not variational, okay? What this means is that, um, Remember the variational principle, usually the lower the energy, the more accurate the calculation is. But the perturbation theory approach, you can actually overestimate your correlation. In other words, you can actually predict a correlation energy that is larger than your exact correlation. Okay? Um, so it is possible, but in practice, um, typically because we always use some truncated basis set, uh, for our calculations, so your basis set size limitations usually lead to errors in the opposite direction, and uh, so it's actually not that big uh, a problem in practice. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so another way of incorporating uh, electron uh, correlation is using what is called the uh, coupled clustered approach. All right. So um, 
the couple of cluster approach exploits this fact that the, your full configurational interaction wave function can be described uh, as uh, this expansion. Okay, um, this e to the power of t is basically what is called the cluster operator, and uh, basically you 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 have uh, you have these operators uh, e, to, e to the power of this uh, series of operators um, multiplied by your Hartree Fock wave function and you can essentially uh, decide to truncate this cluster operator at whatever number that you uh, think is appropriate, right? If you truncate at T2, which is your uh, second order terms, you basically end up with one of the most common techniques that people use when they want to get accurate calculations of your, um, uh, of your uh, molecules, okay? Uh, so this is basically why it's called CCSD. Uh, CCSD basically means uh, couple clusters, singles, and doubles. So with just truncating a t, uh, T2, you basically, if you do the Taylor expansion of your e to the power of t, you basically have 1 plus uh, t1 plus t2 plus t1 plus t2 squared divided by 2 factorial and so on and so forth, uh, multiplied by your hartree fock uh, wave function. Okay. Now, um, you can also include uh, triples. Okay, so T3, uh, if you include the single triples coupling term, you end up with what is called the CCSD bracket T. Uh, so this is typically what is uh, treated as the gold standard in quantum chemistry calculations. Okay, so gold standard meaning that if you have a large enough basis set, you do a CCSD calculation, um, you are typically within uh, what the chemists call chemical accuracy you are within like 4 kilojoules per mole of the correct answer from your Schrodinger equation, okay? Um, CCSDT, you do have analytical gradients and uh, second derivatives available. Um, so um, it is a reasonably um, popular approach, especially if you are uh, working with relatively small um, molecules, okay? All right. Um, before we go, I want to talk about some practical considerations, all right? So whenever we talk about all the correlated methods, um, basis set convergence is a bigger problem for correlated methods, okay? So it is very common that you actually need to go to a larger basis set to actually get the benefit of your more higher correlated method, more highly correlated methods, okay? So you are essentially hit with a double whammy, right? not only is your scaling of your correlated methods worse than hartree fock you also need to use a larger basis set to actually get more accurate answers. So in essence, the calculations then become very, very, very expensive, okay? Now, um, this is actually the nutshell that you should uh, keep in mind, right? So performance versus accuracy. So let's talk about accuracy. As I mentioned, hartree fock is like the baseline method for quantum chemistry. It is the least accurate method, okay? Um, MP2 and MP3 improves on hartree fock all right? Uh, when we talk about things like a couple cluster doubles, uh, CCSD, uh, those are much better than your uh, perturbation theory-based approaches uh, up to MP2. MP4 actually performs better than CCSD slightly, okay? And of course, your gold standard is your CCSD T. Um, methods, okay? So uh, this gives you essentially a hierarchy of methods that you can uh, try to apply when you are trying to get uh, more and more accurate answers, right? So um, in our first lab, you are not going to actually go to, uh, you are not going to do much more than just your Hartree fock plus uh, some um, lower level methods. <laughs> but um, the uh, ammonia molecule is actually small enough that you might want to play around and try to do a um, higher order method calculation, okay? <coughs> so, um, this two actually gives you some um, um, errors, uh, shows you some of the errors in the correlation energies compared to full configurational interaction, okay? So, um, here people have done full configurational interaction calculations for uh, hydrogen bromide, water, H2O, and hydrogen fluoride, okay? And uh, they do it for both the equilibrium geometry <coughs> and for a bond stretch uh, 
geometry. In other words, you also want, sometimes you want to know what is the energy when you actually stretch the bond a little, right? And um, this shows you essentially the errors in the ener correlation energies compared to uh, full configuration interaction, which is basically essentially our exact answer to my Schrodinger equation, right? And what you see is that at MP2 level, your errors are at about 10 kilocals per, uh, kilocalories per mole. Once you get into something like CCSDT, your error decreased to about 0 0.2 kilocals per mole, okay? Uh, and uh, of course, uh, you have all your methods in between uh, that have uh, slightly, uh, slightly uh, higher errors, okay? Um, when you have the bond stretched, uh, geometry correlation energies then become even harder to calculate. Your errors are actually even larger, right? And in this case, uh, you will see that all your errors are somewhat larger, but the trend is basically still similar. Essentially, your MP2 still has an error of about 20 kilocals per mole, but by, by the time you get to things like CCSDT, you are less than 1 kilocals per mole, which is uh, typically what the... Uh, chemist considers as good enough, okay? Um, scaling is, of course, um, one of the things that you always worry about, okay? So whenever we talk about calculations, it is useless to think about just accuracy alone because you, we all have uh, resource limits, right? So Hartree fog enter the power 4, MP2 enter the power 5. As you go up the perturbation theory uh, approaches, you basically keep increasing the uh, power of n, okay? And CCSDT is at n to the power of 7. Uh, this most accurate calculation, which is CCSDTQ, which is uh, coupled cluster single doubles, triples, and quads, okay? You basically have n to the power of 10 scaling, okay? It's super accurate. It's super expensive, okay? So, um, in fact, actually, I don't actually think I have ever seen this calculation done in a paper out there, okay? So, uh, but maybe I'm wrong because I, I don't actually work that much in quantum chemistry, okay? So, um, this, this actually is a good summary of the relative uh, trade-off, right? Between um, how accurate you want your calculations to be, what methods you should be using as you go up the ladder, and uh, the cost, the relative cost that you can expect. Uh, from your calculation, okay? All right, uh, 